Hey, it's Lindsay with Ryan and Rose, and today we're gonna to talk about my testimony. It is a question I get asked a lot. And so I thought I would touch on it a little bit today. Um, some of you asked like, how how did you grow up? And when were you introduced to the Lord? And all the, those type of questions. So I thought I would kind of talk about a little bit, a little bit about that today. Um, so I, I am very grateful that my mom introduced me to the Lord really early. Um, we grew up going to church. Um, I grew up going to a Southern Baptist church where you went on Sunday morning, you went on Sunday night, you went on Wednesday night. Anytime the church was open, you were there. I was in everything choir, soccer, softball, basketball, we did it all. Um, and I'm grateful for that. Like looking back, um, I wouldn't change any of it because it made me who I am today. Um, there are aspects of it that now looking back as I'm older, I'm like, I don't really want that for my child. Um, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently as a how I raise Ryan and Charlie. Um, and I also don't think many people realize is I wasn't, a mature Christian, I wouldn't say until I was in my 20s, until I, I could really say what I knew, it, what it meant to have a relationship with Jesus, what it knew, what it meant to truly have faith and put all of my hope and my trust in Him. And I didn't, even though I grew up in church, I didn't have that until later in life, say my 20s, late 20s, I would probably even say. Um, so I have learned a lot, even the last 10 20 years, um, even in the last 10 years is when my relationship with Jesus has just grown. Um, like I said, we grew up going Sunday morning, Sunday night, anytime the church was open. And not that that's bad. It's just, that's not what religion, that's not what a relationship with Jesus is all about. Like, I think some of my childhood, we were taught what to say. We knew exactly what to say. We could quote all the verses. We but we also knew how to judge people. We also knew all the rules and it was more about this is right and this is wrong. And it was so, so many rules and guidelines and traditions and that's not what it's about. That is not what Jesus is all about. He wants a relationship with you. That's what it's about. And so growing up, I felt like I didn't, I missed the point. I missed that it's about talking to him daily. It's about knowing how to pray. and. Yes, I prayed, I'm sure as a childhood, but I don't, as a child, but I don't think I really knew what that looked like. I don't think I knew how you did that until later on in life, um, in my 20s. And so not that there's anything wrong with that. And it's maybe just some things that I miss personally, maybe some other kids that I went to church with got that. It's just I, I personally didn't. Um, and I think that's kind of what turns people off from religion and church, that they it's focused so much on religion and these rules and that you have to follow. And if I don't do this, I'm wrong and I feel guilty. But that's not what it's about. Like Jesus loves us no matter what. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's like ding, 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 ding. Like it's not about what I do. It's not about um what i've done it's all about what he's done and i sometimes think people get so wrapped up in church or religion that they forget the main point it's about having a relationship with him so um i would say people ask like what what was your turning point so i would say i'll tell you a story so brett's dad bink as y'all know him um uh, kept begging me and he said, Hey, Lindsay, I want you to listen to Kenneth Copeland. And I was like, nah, you know, he's kind of an old guy. He's kind of boring. Like, you know, I've tried a few times and I'm not really interested. Well, he kept asking and asking and asking. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and he said, Lindsay, if you just give, just give him a week, if you listen to him a week and you're not interested after that, then I'll leave it alone. I'm never going to say anything ever again and said, okay, deal. So I listened to a week for him, Kenneth Copeland, Believer's Voice of Victory for a week. And yes, at the beginning, it was hard. <laughs> it was really hard. Um, but my goodness, like day three, I was, I was hooked. It was like, I couldn't get enough of the word. And that's when, that was the turning point for me. I think I was like 23. Um, I think it was in 2010, if that 
yeah, because that was two years before Ryan was born. Yes, 2010 is when my life changed forever. And I started listening to Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And a lot of people um, kind of say, I can't believe you listened to him. Like, all he wants is your money. And that is not true. And it, it makes me, sometimes it makes me cringe because I'm like, no, you're missing. Like, like he's so much about putting it in your ears and your eyes and your mouth and getting that word of God. And I think what really struck me with Ken and Copeland is, my goodness, I've learned so much from him, but like, it was never about money. He never said, give me your money. You know, he always said, like, pray about it. And he never said, this is right. He said, you need to go to the word and you need to look it up and you need to think about it for yourself. So it's, I think those few times he's like, he's mentioned that I'm like, yeah, but how much he's enriched my life. Like, it's life changing. Like it wasn't until Kenny Copeland where I knew what it meant to have faith, to truly 110% have faith in God. Last week, the girls were upstairs working and they were like, Lindsay, you know, we have something really big coming up that I'm excited to tell you about. And they're like, you, you have no stress. And I was like, I legit have given it to the Lord, like 110%. Like I, yes, some, some days are stressful, but they're like, if that was me, like I would be going crazy, but it's like, if you, he, he wants all my cares, he takes all my worry. And I'm able to really say that he, he does like I give, I put my whole heart and my trust and everything and I give it to him and I lay it at his feet and it's amazing. And you can have that too. I think that's what's so awesome. But it wasn't until Kenneth Copeland where I started changing and my heart changed and my relationship. He taught me how to pray. That's when I started doing a prayer journal and writing everything down. It's kind of like, I'm not good with words. And so like I use a prayer journal to write my heart. What's stressing me out? What's my worry? What am I praying for? What am I thankful for? I'm not good at doing it in my head, but I am really good at writing it out and laying it all down there and putting it at his feet. And so that's one aspect um, that I do is a prayer journal. Um, but Kenneth Copeland taught me that write down those desires, write down those, those worries, those the, everything and give it to him. And so I have some really awesome God moments when I started listening to Kenneth Copeland and it just started changing my life. Um, I didn't really plan to go into this, but here we go. Okay. So in 2010, we had a miscarriage and we, I've, if you know my story, you know, I was told I would never have kids. And so I felt like after the miscarriage, yes, I was distraught. Yes, I was sad. Um, it was really hard to handle, but I felt like God was saying, Lindsay, see, you can get pregnant. It's just not your time. And that's within a month, my world was changed upside down. So we went back to school um, in August. I was a teacher, I mean, I was an interpreter for the deaf. And we went back to school and one of the teachers for the deaf quit. And um, a few of the people that I interpreted for in the classroom, they were like, Lindsay, you should totally apply for that. And I was like, no, you know, like, no, like that's, and come to find out, I prayed about it and the Lord just laid it on my heart. And he was like, Lindsay, you can do this. And I was like, but I'm not qualified. Like I'm not qualified for this job. Um, come to find out, I got the job. I was now a teacher for the deaf. I was going back to school to get my master's in deaf education. Um, during that same time, we bought a house. We sold our house in nine days. We were in the net, this house that we're in, where Ryan and Rose, I'm gonna get emotional thinking about it, where Ryan and Rose has been built um, within 30. And um, my life was changed. And, just, and that was by believing in God and giving it to Him and just praying about everything. I remember when we bought this house, we came over and we prayed, we walked around the house and we prayed, Lord, if this is your will, this is, this is, it's all on you. Like if you, if you want it to, to, to happen, we know that it will happen. And what's crazy is it was when the market just crashed. Um, and back in 2010 and everybody's like, you won't be able to sell your house. We sold our house in nine days. And what's crazy, they come to found, they're like, oh, we actually saw your house a year ago and we've been praying that your house would go on, on the market. And it's just crazy, all the little connections that what God had been orchestrating during that time period. So I had a miscarriage, I applied for a job I wasn't qualified for, I got the job, I went back to school, got my master's, completely paid for. 
who does that? Only God. Something I was believing for. No debt from through masters. I mean, it was just like God moment, God mo moment, God moment. And he just, he had a plan. So later on, fast forward, I was in my second year of grad school. I was teaching full time at White Station and um, we got pregnant. Surprise, Ryan Rose. Um, and it's funny because I was so upset about the miscarriage and all that kind of stuff that, and I was teaching full time. Um, I was in grad, grad school. I was in denial, but I was like, you're pregnant. I'm like, I'm not pregnant. I have too much going on to be pregnant. I was pregnant. Um, I, and what's crazy is I actually graduated from grad school and had Ryan Rose in the same week. Um, but it's just so cool to look back and see all that God had done, all that he had orchestrated, all that he had planned out. And it was just by putting faith in him and trusting in him. Um, and that was a big year. That was um, 2010, 2012. Ryan was born in 2012, 2013. Ryan and Rose came. Um, but yeah, we've had some pretty amazing God moments. And I, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for my past. I'm grateful for... Um, for Ray introduced me to Kenneth Copeland and also right like now we go to a church called Fellowship Memphis it is amazing um they taught me a lot they taught me um it's not it's not about going to church it's not about going on Sunday morning Sunday night and Wednesday night it's about you being the church me I'm the church every day um yes we go to church for fellowship we go to church for enrichment but we don't depend on the church for that like we we are just as responsible we we need to enrich our day-to-day -day life but then also we are his hands and we are his feet like we should be doing church every day and what's so awesome is I get to do that for my platform I get to do that through Instagram and social media and um I'm I'm so grateful for Fellowship Memphis and Kenneth Copeland. Um, I recommend watching Kenneth Copeland's Believer's Voice of Victory because it changed my life. Um, but what's so great about them is they're they're say they put put your eyes and ears put put the word. Don't just listen to them, but you need to listen, read the word, have it in your ears, in your mouth. It has to be a part of your everyday life. Because what you're reading, what you're saying, what you're believing for, you have to believe it, but you also have to speak it. Speak that into existence. Your words are so important. And that's one thing that I've learned. Like, don't don't be so down on yourself. Um, use your words. Use them to your benefit. Like, I'm going to be successful. And that's what I've always said about Ryan Rose. Like, people are like, did you ever imagine you would be where you are today? I'm like, yeah, I did. Because I use my words, I'm like, this is going to be a million dollar business. This, we're going to be successful. Um, just recently, somebody was like, well, did you know you're going to sell other products? And I was like, yeah. I said, that's why we called it Ryan and Rose and not Cutie Clips, because God gave me that vision that we're going to, I don't know what it's going to be, but I have faith and I believe that he's going to, he's going to provide and he's just going to lead me. Now, do I see myself with Ryan and Rose in 10 years? I don't know. I'm just ready wherever God wants to take me. Um, because if you look at my life, like I thought I would be interpreting for 30 years and I was an interpreter and then God was like, nope, I want you to be a teacher. You're going to go back to school. Follow it as will. Teach it for the deaf. Then he's like, oh, Lindsay, it's time for you to quit and have your own business. And it's like, whoa, are you sure? But it's, it's having that faith and that trust. And so I did, I, I took the plunge, I quit and Ryan and Rose, like, like God is so good and just, just, it's like, I want what I have. I want you to have it. I want everybody to have it. And I wish, I just want to shout it and say, you can have what I have. You just have to talk to them, pray. And when I say pray, it's not like, you know, it's every day and, and not even my eyes closed, just talking to him, Lord, thank you for this. Like, can you help me get the, you know, I'm having this hard time going, doing this decision. Like, what do you think I should do? And it's, it's leaning on him. It's kind of like a best friend. It's like somebody who loves you so much and he wants to listen to you and he wants to talk to you. And that's what I do. It's like that conversation all day, every day, putting your eyes on the word, listening to you, getting it in your every day. And just, it makes you positive. It makes you happy. It makes you carefree. It makes you stress-free. 
And I hope that for you. I, I really, really do. Now, do I sin? Heck yeah. Do I make mistakes? Heck yeah. Do you, am I perfect? No, but I don't have to be. I don't have to be because he loves me enough that he forgives me. And it's not about my work. It's not about what I've done. It's not about what I can do or what I can give. It's not about that. It's about having him, Lord, come in my heart, be with me. Ah, like it's, it's so good. It's so good. And I just wish everybody could have that. And I wish they could get past church and get back past religion, religion and forget about that and just focus on Jesus and focus on what he did and how much he loves you and how much he wants to be a part of your life and how much he wants to take over. And once you let him take over, pff, awesome, amazing life. Um, yeah, I'm just grateful. I've kind of been all over the place and I don't even know if I talked about everything I wanted to talk about, but God's good. He's good. Don't focus on the rules. Don't focus on, and what's crazy about that, I feel like churches, and I'm, I go to church, I love my church, I think churches are awesome, so I'm not, I'm not trying to say that's bad or anything like that. You need church, you need fellowship, you need those people, um, but it's not about rules. You know, most of the rules that I feel like churches put on us, it's not in the Bible. Did, did, Jesus, did they say I can't wear jeans to church? Did they say I can't drink wine? Did they say I can't drink alcohol? Like, look in the word. It doesn't, we, we, the people have made all these rules and that's not what it's about. It's not what it's about. Now, something else that I, my favorite show, the Bible, AD, if you're looking something to really open your eyes. Now, I'm a visual person. Like I said, I have to write, I have to see it. The Bible AD changed my life. I was so sad when it went off the air. And I remember watching it and being like, what's next? What's next? And it's like, I, Lindsay, you can go to your Bible and see what's next. But it's like, I needed to see it. I needed to see Peter. I needed to see Paul. Like having a visual, when I see Peter, like when I'm interpreting at church, I interpret every Sunday and I'm, I, inter I see Peter. I see Peter's face from, from AD. And it, but that's what I needed. I needed to see like that. So, it's on Netflix. Go watch it. I hope they bring it back because it changed my life. It really, really did. Um, I highly recommend it. But it was just so good to see Mary. And I'm like, oh, I never knew that. That makes so much sense. Um, but that's a way to put it in your eyes. Put it, get, feed yourself, feed your soul. You need that. Um, but the point is, have a relationship. It's not about what you can do. Um, Jesus already did it for us. He just wants a relationship with you and he wants to be in your heart. And it's just awesome sauce. <laughs> Something that Ryan would say. Um, God's good. So that's a little bit about my history. I don't know. Hopefully it wasn't too boring, but um, I have a lot of God moments. But don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to do some more kind of testimony about my past and some of the God moments that have happened in my life. So um, if you want to see more, make you sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at Ryan and Rose. We are always showing behind the scenes. Um, and yeah, and you can visit us on our website, ryanandrose.com.